The whole basis of measured home performance is the testing, the measuring. So before and after testing or testing and then targeting where you want to be so that then when you post test, you know what number you were aiming for and targeting your dehumidifier sizing, for example, is a thing that's really important because you could use what the manufacturers say, which is this dehumidifier is good for up to this many square feet of home. And I can tell you from personal experience with working with people who bought dehumidifiers based on that metric, they often will end up be, being totally the wrong size. So that number that they're coming up with, oh, this dehumidifier can handle up to 4,000 square feet. This one can do up to 1,200 square feet. Like it's totally, it, they have no idea how leaky the house is. They have no idea what kind of ventilation system you've got. They have no idea where you are in the country or in the world. So they cannot say that this can serve a 3,000 square foot house. That's ridiculous. So they should stop saying that, but they're not going to because they want to sell it to like normal people who don't speak this language. So let's get even nerdier about this language and talk about how we target this. First of all, let me show you this website right here. This is called the Building America Solution Center. This is very important as a resource for people like you who are building, uh, doing DIY projects, trying to plan their next addition or remodel or whatever it is, you've got all kinds of different checklists and you've got, you know, all this stuff. What I want to show you right now is red calc tools. And so if you click here, you have a couple options. You've got like the standalone or the whole pro web app. We're going to use both of them today. Um, if you try the standalone, what you'll find here is a tool that you've seen on this channel before. If you are a subscriber, which I hope you are, and if you're not already, go ahead and hit that, that button because like we nerd out about this stuff all the time. Now, in past videos, I have shown, and this is the Pro app. By the way, all of this stuff is totally free. It's owned by the government. Socialism, yay. Here's what we're gonna do with this. Right now, I have my home location built in here, which is Georgia near the airport in Atlanta. We've got 3,000 square feet. We've got five people in my family. It's about 28 feet from the grade up to the tip top of the inside of the enclosure. And our blow order test is 290 CFM 50. So what I can see from here, which I have used before on this channel, is the infiltration credit that we can take advantage of when we're sizing our fresh air dilution. And so this is saying that our whole house needs 128 CFM every minute of every day, but we're getting one CFM for free, so we really need 127. Now here's what's interesting. I can obviously uh, take a credit for filtration, which we do in this house. So I really only need 101, but watch this. When I introduce balanced ventilation, this infiltration credit goes from one CFM to 11 CFM. Why does that happen? I don't actually know. I'm gonna ask Ian Walker about this uh, later, but um, but one, one thing at a time. So here it says I have 11 CFM of infiltration. But again, this is for ventilation calculations, not for finding out actually how much air there's going to be coming into the house on a given day. <clears throat> so what I really want to do is find out how much real infiltration might have, because in this house, on a different day with a different temperature, I'm going to get a wildly different number because infiltration is largely based on stack effect and then also influenced by wind, neither of which I have modeled into this tool. So we're going to go here and we're going to go to uh, uh, design infiltration is the tool. So I'm going to show you this is the tool that we're going to use. But first, I want to demonstrate why this is important. Uh, when you do a manual J calculation, which is something that everybody should be doing if you're going to be picking air conditioning and heating equipment for your home, you're going to do a calculation called manual J load calc. It, it could be other standards, but manual J is the one that we use for homes most of the time in the United States of America. F280 for Canada. It will give you a total heating required, including ventilation air, a sensible gain, 19,000, and a latent gain. Latent is humidity. So it's saying, Manual J is saying, oh, my latent is 2,980. And what I can do is just divide that number by 42.1. So this is 2,980 divided by 42.1, and that gives me pints per day. That's 71 pints per day is how much I need in this house. However, that is measuring the hottest and the coldest days of the year, 99% of each, not the 100% hottest and coldest. It'll get hotter and colder in these spots. But we, we do 99%, the engineers say so, don't, don't fudge the math, stick with the math. There's already fat built into this. 
the hottest day of the year does not have the most humid air outside. And this is why we use this tool. So when you come over to ashray-medio.info, you get to this amazing site, which gives you all of these weather stations all over the world. So we're gonna go dial in on Atlanta Airport, which is right here. And we can see that on the hottest day, which is 92 degrees, which again, we're verifying uh, over here, 91, 92. The, the 92 degree that I've got pulled up here is from uh, 2021 data. This one is probably older than that because I did this calculation on our house in back in 2018. So now it's 92 degrees is the hottest, 99% hottest, but the wettest temperature is 80. On an 80 degree day, I'm gonna have 129 grains of moisture per pound. So let's just do this calculation real quick. Uh, if I want to bring the air temp and humidity down to, and I'm gonna use this right here, so we're at about 1,000 feet elevation. We want it to be 75 degrees, and we want it to be 50% relative humidity. You can see that my grains per pound is about 65. It's 67. If I bring this temperature down to 72, and I still want it to be 50% relative humidity, now I need to reduce it down to 60, 61-ish, right? So playing with this, if I wanted it to be 70 degrees and 50% relative humidity, it's even drier. I need to bring it down to 57 instead. So somewhere around 65 is generally where I shoot people. Um, <laughs> that's a weird way to say it. Somewhere around 65 is where I'm aiming for you to be. 65 grains of moisture per pound. You could go for 60 if you wanted to. Um, and so to do that, what we're going to do is first figure out uh, let's say let's say 60, just to be super conservative, right? So we have we have 128 here, right here, 128.5. Let's call it 129 minus 60 is a difference of 69. Nice, 69 grains per pound is what we need to strip out of the air. We don't know how much air there is going to be coming into my house, so we're going to use uh, this tool right here the design infiltration with AIM-2. AIM-2 is just an engine that was developed. I think it was in uh, Alberta, Canada. So building leakage, the very first thing you need to know is your blow order test. If you do not have a blow order test, you have no way of doing this. So stop right now and go get a blow order test. It should cost you a couple hundred bucks. It's not a big deal. It's very, pretty fast. They can do it in about an hour. Um, most important metric that you can get on your house. Don't change the pressure exponent. 0.65 is like based on the kind of size and characteristics of the holes that are in your house. Building height is important. So we're going to put my house at 28 height. Uh, building has a vented crawl space. No way. Gross. Building shelter class. Structures immediately adjacent. Yeah, that sounds like me. And terrain category, urban or suburban, large city center, urban or waterfront. Mine is urban or suburban. Specify leakage distribution. Red Calc says, do not change this unless you have a specific reason to suspect that these numbers are off. Like if you know you have more accurate data, then go ahead and use that. But otherwise, just stick with what they've got here. Uh, building has an open flue or chimney? No, gross. Again, uh, design indoor temperature. Okay, so here we're going to use that temperature that we had over here, which is 80.4, which I'm going to round down to 80. We're going to make it 80. And inside, I want it to be let's say 72, again, because we're aiming for that 60 grains of moisture per pound. So 72 degrees at 50% relative humidity is where we're aiming. Design wind speed, I could say zero. I could say five. We're, let's stick with five for a minute and we'll see which, what happens. Stack-induced infiltration. This is based on the delta T from inside to outside and the height of the building. We got 98 CFM, cubic feet per minute, every minute coming in from that. Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry, my building leakage is totally wrong. Boom. Okay, good. Now we're, now we're in business. 290. Okay, so I have 6.6 .6 CFM coming in from infiltration from stack effect. Wind, with that 5 mile an hour wind, is producing 1.5 CFM additional to that. Now, this one does not have the ventilation built into it, which I would also put into this. So we would put, um, we would add this number to the ventilation that I'm running, which again, we looked at a few minutes ago here. And I'm going to be running 91 CFM. Now I have to run my, because that's my fresh air target. My exhaust target is 105 because that's how my bathrooms work. I can't turn off my ERV or else my bathroom starts sinking up. So now the calculation that we do here, 69 grains per pound 
that we need to remove times the inf the actual air coming in, which is 105 CFM of uh, ventilation through the ERV, plus that 6.6 .6 CFM that we've got on this design day, which is the most humid day of the year, times our little coefficient, which takes into account multiplying by 24 hours and blah, 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 0 0.0148. And our actual pints per day is 114 pints per day. That would be if I wasn't using an ERV, if I had an HRV, or if I had some other kind of a, a ventilation system that was running without an energy recovery core or an enthalpy recovery core. That's the E part of it. By the way, E, energy recovery core, always better. ERV rather than HRV. That's basically anywhere in the world you would, you would have that. So at that point, we don't have here what we were saying was 2,980. We have actually 4,800 BTUs of latent. Now here's the, the catch on this. My ERV strips out the latent capacity, the, it's called latent efficiency, of most ERVs on the market today is around 60%. Let's be conservative and say it's 50%. So I would divide this by two and I end up with 2,400. Now in this case, that's not that far off from 3,000. It's, what is that, 20% uh, lower, right? So it's 80% of the total. Uh, that we would have without this. But it's really important to calculate this because like we've done on this channel before, we looked at Key West, we looked at Arizona, we look at uh, Montana, we look at California. You could have wildly different hottest days and humid days. And that is the distance that we're really trying to get here. So this design infiltration, I really like because it's able to give you on the specific day. Now let's turn around real quick and do the um, design outdoor temperature of 22, which is my outdoor uh, temperature in the winter time. And let's go ahead and up this wind since it's a nice cold day to 10 uh, miles per hour. I'm gonna make the temperature inside 70 instead. At this point now we've got 21 CFM plus four CFM is uh, for some reason designed 21 CFM. Hmm. Again, there's all kinds of little like if then and pieces of uh, of minutia inside these algorithms. So I'm not sure exactly why that is not adding together, but let's just say for the sake of argument that it, that this is right. So 21 would be our number. That's a lot more, right? So um, 21 plus the ERV running 105 all the time would be our new number. Now, or again, this is why ERV is very useful if you have a very airtight home. If you do not have an airtight home, I'm just gonna reiterate again, it's not a big enough selling point for the efficiency that you're gonna get, which is a drop in the bucket based on air leakage that you've got through your house. So if you haven't had a blower to test, get a blower to test. If your house is not airtight, don't worry about an ERV for right now because you can get it through other things like a ventilating dehumidifier. Uh, and on that last point then, the dehumidifier is important as a first step. Everybody should be planning for dehumidification because we can see from all of these maps that we've got, uh, the weather stations, that we need dehumidification in almost every place with or without ventilation. Now an ERV is still going to make the dehumidification job more important. An HRV would do twice as bad of a job of this. It would make your, your humidity problems much bigger in the summertime and in the wintertime. An ERV is, is more efficient about it, but it still is gonna drive your house towards outside temperatures and outside humidity. So you still need a dehumidifier if you have an ERV. It does not replace it. So dehumidifier, super important. That's why we target. So get your blower test, get your data, start doing your math, and I hope that this has helped somebody. Uh, please feel free to comment below if you have anything else to ask or add to the conversation. Like and subscribe, tune in next time.